You have crude flirting with a bear market as the coronavirus eats into demand. The IEA, the latest, with crude slipping on virus fears, saying the global oil demand is going to drop this quarter for the first time in over a decade before rebounding in the third quarter. My long-running joke with the IEA is that they're going to revise it down and down and down and yeah. down again when it comes to demand. I mean, are they right? Is it, is it going to be steeper or not as bad as they think? Um, the current environment is pretty dire, what's going on in, in China. I mean, you saw the Baltic freight index went negative, which is an indication just how weak the demand picture is. Now, oil's a little bit different from, from the other commodities. With, let's, let's take steel. I'm pretty comfortable saying demand is down 50, 60 percent year over year. We have data. Oil, we know there's nobody out there driving. We know what the activity is. We know it's down. But where are you storing the oil? We don't see it backing up. Let's take natural gas. Mm -hmm. We know LNG imports are down 40%, but you don't see that in oil. Mm -hmm. So we know the oil's going into China. We know the demand's off, but you can't store products infinitely. So is the reason why? Because it's, it's not cheap enough to then justify floating storage and there's still room and tank but, but tops if, on if, shore? But if it were floating storage, we would see it. We would see it in freight rates. Freight rates are low. They're about like what they were um, during the Chinese New Year last year. So there's not, they're low, but they're not catastrophically low like the Baltic mm -hmm. Freight Index. Mm -hmm. um, but they're not high enough that they're contracting ships for putting in storage. So, I mean, if you, if you do the math and you go, okay, where are inventories? It would suggest demand for oil is down, let's say, three or four million barrels per day. If it was down as much as metals and all the other markets, mm -hmm. you would be down six or seven million barrels per day. Mm -hmm. But you gotta ask, where's the oil? So I, I do agree with their right. But there is something very mysterious about oil that sits very differently. Because like natural gas, it's been absolutely clobbered. Yes. Um, you, you've got JKM now trading at a discount to Europe and not to the U.S. yet. But why? Because we saw that, you know, if you look at uh, one way to think about natural gas, China is the most short natural gas of all the different commodities. So when you see the drop in demand, it's got to hit the imports immediately. It did what you'd expect. Price has got crushed. Mm -hmm. um, and we're comfortable with the weakness in demand there. Um, aluminum's on the flip side. They're long aluminum. Um, aluminum's barely um, mm -hmm. budged because you're going to lose the supply they typically produce. Again, consistent with everything we know. Oil, on the other hand, they're short. It's just not backing up the way you'd expect. So, if you look at the, con <coughs> the contango in the 1 to 12 month for Brent, what does it tell you? What is it reflecting and what should the, it be? See, that's the thing is, is you've gone from a backwardation to a, a slight contango. Mm -hmm. You're not full carry. You're running 25, 30 cents on the front month. If demand was really down, let's say six, seven million barrels per day, which would be consistent with steel and some of the other commodities, the front end of that curve should be backing up substantially. Maybe it's going to happen in another week and we don't see it coming, or maybe the demand is not as bad as we think. Or is it supply? That subsidy, but, but, Libya, but, 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 but can they cut, they, they produce roughly, let's say, four million barrels per day of crude, they import 10. You really can't shut that production down like you can with coal. We know coal is down. Mm -hmm. That's another mm -hmm. one where we know um, production there is down around 40% consistent with the loss, loss in demand. Again, we got data there. Um, but I don't think that's the answer either. So do you think that OPEC is secretly cutting? And by OPEC, I mean Saudi Arabia? Like, how do you account right, for this? Again, let's, let's, let's go with what, you know, we don't see it in the, the loading data. You don't see it in the shipping data. Um, you know, you go by what, you know, the, the word of mouth out there is that, um, a lot of the exporters into China have cut by around 10 percent, but that's mm. not enough to explain the magnitude of the drop. So bottom line here, I agree with the IA. Now, IA was very careful today. Go, we don't know either. Mm -hmm, it's the mm -hmm. one commodity. The other commodities, I'll give you a number. They didn't say it. It's going to be down in first quarter, and I'm comfortable with that. How big is it going to be down? We don't know. So do you buy time spreads here? Like, what's the trade then off of that? Uh, uh, on the back end of the curve, you, you, you could argue that they were mispriced, and they, they, have, they have improved somewhat. Um, but if, but if we're, it's very binary. Mm. Um, either this is a lot bigger than we think, and you got a lot more downside in the in the coming weeks, which we would argue that what's being mispriced would be um, puts. We would be buying puts out on, out on the back end. Um, but the other um, offset to this, and we see it in the metals market, is the stimulus that can that, that is potentially coming down the pipeline. You already see it in special pur purchase special purpose issuance by local governments in China, so that they've already ramped it up to levels higher than what we've seen last year. So they're, they're teeing this up. And I think that's what the equity markets are pricing. The equity markets are looking at, hey, big stimulus coming down. In fact, everybody saying this is whatever it takes, part two, in the sense that um, she is going to throw everything at it to prevent something bad happening. So in that respect, do we need uh, an OPEC cut? Because the Persian Gulf guys are one of the biggest uh, sellers to China. They could stand to lose a lot of money. Do they need to cut then? Yeah, you know, that that's 
I think if they had a clear read on this, you'd see, see them already do it. Because it, there's a, another offset of this is that um, China's a big um, producer of product. Um, mm -hmm. And if they, it, either they should have crushed the product margins and exported all those product out, that's not happening, mm -hmm. or they didn't produce it and product margins are widening, that's not happening either. So it's very mixed signals of what's going on. It's kind of a black box. The oil comes in there, we know the demand's off, but we don't know where it's really going. Maybe they're just out driving and people are joy driving or something like that. And we, we just don't, don't see it. We just don't see it. Oh, but you don't okay. even see that in the, again, the TomTom -tom data. The TomTom -tom mm -hmm. data mm -hmm. um, suggests that, you know, the traffic's relatively weak. So oil is the one mysterious commodity out, out of all the commodities here. And I think the fact that OPEC hasn't acted, they too are looking at the conflicting mm -hmm. signals. You know, IEA came out this morning. It's down, but we don't know how much it's down.